Nelson was the head women's Olympic coach for the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal. Hey, it's, it's uh, glad to hear from you and uh, and uh, to know that you're still chasing uh, the beauty of our girls in 76. That brings us to the German um, Olympic Committee has uh, awarded uh, compensation to about 167 uh, East German athletes for the systematic doping uh, from 1973 through 1989, and and Jack, I, Coach, I know that that was that has had a tremendous effect on that 1976 Olympics. And I, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, prior to the 76 Olympics, the East Germans had just blown us away uh, in the World Championships, um, and our girls were honestly bothered by the fact that they had been the greatest team in the world for a while, and then suddenly the East Germans just are blowing us away. Uh, Swimming World Magazine first reported in 1973, now this is three years out from 76, as you know, that something was going on and everybody was trying to find out what was so special about the East German training program. And uh, in the article, uh, there was the first uh, print uh, mentioned that they were experimenting with some type of uh, recovery uh, or fatigue vaccine where they were injecting toxins and there also were uh, some allegations to, to doping. And at the time, that was the first time that it was really brought out that something's kind of unusual going on. And uh, do you remember that period in 73? We're talking three years out now. Well, keep in mind that that might have been the first time that it was uh, published, but we knew, but we just couldn't prove it. We knew while we were there that they were beating up on us with steroids and whatever, and um, but but it was nothing we could do about it, right? And plus, you didn't want to be nasty Americans, you know, at the Olympics. And the girls, they they broke nine. American records. They broke nine American records. Wow. But, and, and also during that time of those nine, there were four world records broken, but not, uh, it, they didn't count because these Germans had touched us out on all of those potential world records. So mm -hmm. we, the, the girls were doing well. They just weren't winning. You know what I'm saying? They were, yeah. they were swimming all American times, and I was really proud of them for that. And, uh, and like when they would call, um, the, the press would call Shirley in. It was terrible what they were doing, saying, don't you feel bad that you're not winning? You know, and hey, that's, that's a young girl. She's, uh, 17 years old. She's, uh, uh a very outstanding, swimmer for the United States of America, and so I just stopped them, and I said, look, guys, if you're going to speak about negatives here to an amateur swimmer against these um, these uh, professionals here, I said, I'm just going to walk her right out of here. Shirley Babishoff, uh, Cornel Shirley Babishoff had the 100, could have had the 100 world record. She, at one point in time, she traded the 200 world record free back and forth with Cornelia Ender. She had the 400 world record, and then right. she, she lost that. And then she goes into the Olympic trials and sets the world record in the 800 free and then loses that, all of them to the drug-induced Germans. Right. Psychologically, you know, you as a coaching staff, the country, you're seeing, you're seeing every time these the Germans, you know, set a new record, you know, we just pushed somehow, you know, past that, that record only to be surpassed again by the Germans. And that whole period of that psychological, what, what else do we have to do, uh, you know, to secure, to secure a world record and a gold, it just had to be mind-boggling during that time. I'm not, I'm not, I might be jumping here a little bit, but we rode on the same bus from the dormitories as these Germans. And the East Germans were talking like this, and they had hair all over their arms. And like when we got into the Olympic uh, pool, um, Kathy uh, Hetty comes flying out and said, 
said, Coach, Coach, there's men in the locker room. I said, Honey, those aren't men. Those are women, you know. And so they had a lot to overcome. Psychologically, they had a lot to overcome. Well, let's, let's talk about the media a little bit because uh, Shirley spoke out. And, you know, I, you already said that there was this air where you felt that you were kind of pinned in. You were muzzled. You couldn't really say anything that was derogatory because you would have been pinned as poor sports people. Uh, and, but Shirley said something. And as a result, she was uh, she was branded yeah, by the same. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was you know what? I mean, that woman, that girl, that beautiful athlete, was doing some fantastic swimming, and and no one would appreciate it. No one would 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 you know get, get on and, and say, "Hey, lady, you are great." You know what I'm saying? What, when did you, you you had your suspicions, when did you feel you had solid proof? You know what's sad is even though the girls were magnificent, they, uh, and, and by the way, even the ones that didn't break American records broke their own records. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they were great swimmers doing a great job against some, some terrible cheaters. I'm so happy that Shirley's talking to you. You follow me? <laughs> yeah. I only saw her. I've only seen her one time since the Olympics, and that was when she came around the country and he came through Fort Lauderdale raising money for the for the Olympic uh, tr trip to I think um, um, Korea. One thing that that stands out uh, in my mind is that. We had a chance to win that 4x100 freestyle relay, provided every one of our girls would do all their best times. And so almost to the day uh, of, the, of the full week before the, the last event, which was, uh, which was at the end of the week, um, I don't remember exactly what day it was, but it was for the, uh, the 400 freestyle relay, and we qualified, our girls qualified uh, second, and um, and the Canadian girls qualified third, and we spent, we, the coaches and I, we spent time with the girls saying, look, we can win this relay, but it has to be done this way. Kim Payton, you're the American record holder. Every time you get on the block, you go faster than you've ever gone, so we're going to lead you off the first hundred as fast as you can go. Well, Wendy, you're going to go second, and you're going to and you're going to try to catch um, uh, Ender, because Ender, we knew that she was going to go first, and we wanted Kim to go with Ender and do the best she could to put us in position to win totally. So, anyway, Kim is she? Her job is to be within a a body's length of the first hundred against um, against uh, Ender. So on the start... Now, now, now Kim's best at that time was like 57.5, I think. Right. But but she went 56.5, I believe, in the leadoff leg. You with me? Yep. She, she went her... Once again, she, she broke the American record with 103, but she was one full length uh, on the touch from from Ender. And we, we didn't tell them they had to beat them. We told them they had to be within a body length, okay? And then Wendy's job was to catch up. Wendy's job was to catch up that one body length that Kim breaking the American record uh, had done. So Wendy takes off and drops two seconds in, in the fastest hundred of her life, she was in. She was like, uh, instead of a 57 swimmer, she was a 55 swimmer in that relay. Okay, Jill's job then was to get Shirley the lead. Jill's job was to get Shirley the lead. Now it's Jill Sturkle. Jill Sturkle, right? Mm -hmm. And Jill Sturkle did get 
surely the lead by going 55 plus herself. Now, mm. now Kim's going her best time. Wendy's going her best time by two seconds. Jill yeah, because Jill, Jill's best going in, into that was a 50, 57 too. Right, and she came back with a 55 five. You right? Yep. Okay, and now surely gets the she gets the the lead on Jill's touch. She gets the lead on Jill's touch. Uh, the Germans uh, 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 um, claim that she jumped, but they did not, and because they they showed it on film that she did not. But it was a great, it was a great start, and Jill just blew him away with another 55. There's just no, there was no way that she was going to lose that relay. There's just no way she was going to lose it because she had gotten sick and tired of those people burning her, you know. What was so outstanding was they won with their minds. They didn't worry about, uh, you know, the East Germans at this point. They were worried about America winning, and they did, and people went bonkers. And, and the thing about it is uh, they, they were truly, truly great Americans during that, during that relay, and, and they had no fear, no fear at that point. I honestly feel that if a man or a woman go their best time, that that's a plus. If the man or the woman breaks the American record, that's a plus plus, right? Mm -hmm. But we never got credit for that. And we, and we did have the girls ready to go on this relay. It wouldn't mm -hmm. have mattered if they, look, they, they, what they do? They beat them by four seconds. They're, they're, those four girls, Kim, Wendy, Jill, and surely, they broke the world record by four seconds. What, what was it like when you came back to the States? Oh, let me tell you what it was like even before we got back to the States. The coaches, and this is, I'm sorry about this, but a number of the coaches would look away when they saw me. They would look away because they themselves did not understand what these girls had achieved. They themselves didn't recognize the fact that we had been cheated to the limit. You know? You said the United States coaches, the German yeah. coaches? Uh, I think the German coaches were, uh, were ashamed. Oh. And in fact, uh, one told me later on in, uh, at, a, at a World Cup swim meet that um, when the Chinese started playing games, he said, you know what they're doing, don't you? I said, what's that? He said the same thing that you, the East Germans did. So what, what was it like when you came back to the States? Uh, it was sad, you know, because, you know, people, people couldn't accept. People couldn't accept that when you, when you break your best time of your life in a hundred by two seconds, and when four girls out of four girls all go their career best swim to to do it, they just they just couldn't accept the fact that the guys were beating everybody and our girls were not beating anybody. So I took the film of the relay. I took it around to all the people here in Fort Lauderdale, and people were uh, people were in tears. They were so happy, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hang on a minute. Uh, Coach, now that the German Olympic Committee is doing something to rectify what has happened uh, from 1973 to 1989 in the East German uh, athletic program, what's the, what do you think should be done to bring this issue or to compensate you know, those 1976 women? Boy, what a, what a tough question, right? What a tough question because no way will we ever give them what they totally deserve. But, but the Olympic Committee 
surely should give them gold medals for the one for the uh, events where they broke world records. You with me? And the United States women should give gold medals to the to the hundreds uh, and the other the other events that, that that they broke American records. Now, this in itself is not going to be the most wonderful thing that that can happen for our girls. But at least it will remind them that we care about them, that we appreciate them, that that um, that they were they were greater than the people that supposedly touched them out. They were absolutely greater than the people who supposedly touched them out. And um, some way or another, that has to be handled properly and 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 um, realistically because it's unfair. It's unfair, and and it hurts so much that our great American girls have worked so beautifully to to overcome to overcome what they were about to have to compete with, and nobody uh, not I shouldn't say nobody, but very 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 few people were. Um, we're willing to step forth and, and say, good job, God. In 1976, a travel event occurs because the French airplane, the Concorde, enters service for the first time, cuts flying time across the Atlantic to three and a half hours, an amazing thing. The first USA $2 bill is issued. I've got two in my wallet today, not from 1976, I might add. Landing vehicles from the USA space program sets down on Mars. Jimmy Carter defeats Gerald Ford in the US presidential election. A movie called One Flew Over the, Over the Cuckoo's Nest wins the Academy Award for Best Picture. The first ever punk rock single is released, New Rose by the Damned. 32 African nations boycott the Montreal Olympics in protest of continued sporting links between New Zealand and South Africa. And in our beloved sport of swimming, Jack Nelson becomes the head coach of women for the 1976 USA Olympic team. Access to success is through the mind, resided on the back of Fort Lauderdale swim team t-shirts for decades. And no one personified this thought more thoroughly than Coach Jack Nelson. He has the special skill to make each person he speaks with feel unique, important, and a crucial part of the team. Jack's one of the most successful high school swimming coaches in history, as well as coaching USA national teams in 74, 75, 76, 79, 81, 83, 90, and 1994. He's a member of five distinct swimming halls of fame. Coach Nelson's FLST team won seven national championship titles, as well as eight US Open titles. In 1976, against an East German women's team that was later proved to be composed entirely of doped athletes, Coach Nelson's motivational skills were vital to keeping that team together and leading to their ultimate success on the final day. Selected to the International Swimming Hall of Fame in 1994, please welcome our hometown hero, the inimitable Coach Jack Nelson. Is everybody having fun? Well, let me hear you, babies. John said I had to come in here and um, tell you folks one of the greatest moments in coaching. And I wonder what he meant. So anyway, it was July 25, 1976, in Montreal, Canada. Frank Elm, Jim Montrella, and I had been honored to be selected the coaches for the United States Women's Olympic Team. We trained at West Point and had a great togetherness there, then went up to Montreal by bus. The East German women were taken center stage in the world swimming by breaking world records at Belgrade, wearing a new breakthrough suit. Uh, our women were very aware of the East Germans they and we had arrived in Montreal simultaneously. Their deep voices were a shock to all of us. 
Joe Hoshberger came running from the ladies' locker room saying, Coach, there are men in the ladies' bathroom. <laughs> and I said, Honey, it's just the, 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 uh, the, lady, coaches, uh, the lady swimmers from uh, Germany. So once the Olympics began, our women were breaking American records and doing best times for themselves but coming in second and third to the East Germans. Now we know, after the fact, that they had been taking steroids to enhance their performances. We suspected because of their massive bodies and male sounding uh, voices, the press would ask questions like, Shirley, how does it feel to be second in your event? I did not have good thoughts toward the U.S. press during that meet because they didn't mention steroids. They only mentioned that Shirley wasn't winning all the races. Well, in truth, she did win all the races, but she never got credit for it. <laughs> the women's 400 freestyle relay was the last swimming event of the Olympics that year. Just prior to the relay event, while walking down the deck, one of the Canadian coaches said, good luck uh, for our relay is going to be second. And I said, oh, congratulations. And I turned around and said, but we're going to be first. And I didn't want to tell him that because I didn't want to fire him up. But anyway, I'll tell you, I'll tell you more later. Um, the women's 400 freestyle relay was the last swimming event of the Olympics last year. Just prior to the relay event, well, oh, okay, I did that, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> I had a good idea that the Germans were going to lead off with Cornelia Ender, who held the world record in the 100 meters freestyle. Each of our ladies had their individual specific responsibility in this relay. We practiced relay takeoffs every day, and all the swimmers and coaches on the staff agreed on the order that we would swim to kick the Germans' butts. We let off our fastest swimmer, Kim Payton, our national champion, and her job was to stay within a body length of Cornelia. Isn't that fantastic that a young lady can accept that job knowing that, that She's going after the world record guy in the first place. But anyway, Kim Payton, our national champion, her job is to stay within a body length of Cornelia. She did that and broke the American record as well. Wendy Bolio, who had won the bronze medal in the 100 butterfly between two steroid-enhanced East Germans, was next. Her job was to come up even with the German team in lane four. She did her job beautifully. Jill Sterkel, the youngest on our women's team, went third. Her job was to get Shirley a lead, and Jill was absolute dynamite in doing so. Shirley was a fighter, and as she dived in, she had a very slight lead against the East German team. And she kept the lead to get the the first gold medal for our USA women in the 1976 Olympics. Our, lady, our ladies each had a, 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 let me start over here. Our ladies each did what they needed to do and we won the event and it was very, very exciting. We went 344.82. Uh, each of our girls went seconds faster. We had a American record 56, we had a 55, we had a 55, and a 56 anchor. And of course the anchor lady was a, a, a distant swimmer. <laughs> the, uh, let's see. Donna De Verona and Jim McKay were the newscasters for the swimming events. They had predicted that the German women would win the event. Donna, who Cheryl and I love, said after the event, I have never been happier to eat my words. My wife was sitting in the stands with a singer by the name of Andy, what's the last name? Williams. Andy Williams, okay. And she kept 
hitting him on the shoulder. I didn't see this. I heard it from other people. Said, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it. And this guy didn't know who in the hell he did it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we, uh, now, now I want everybody who hasn't seen it and who have seen it to watch a record-breaking women's 400 freestyle relay right now. Now keep in mind, Kim Payton, sprint freestyler. Wendy Bolio, great butterflyer. Jill Sterkel, sprint freestyle. And Shirley Babishop was the distance uh, anchor. The one, the one great thing that all four girls had, what they had was the hunger and the greatest of mine. Fantastic East German women. Three minutes, 48.80. Shirley Babishop. Here are the uh, lane lineups for tonight. In lane one will be Sweden, the Soviet Union in lane two. The United States will be swimming in lane three, right next to the East Germans in lane four. Canada is in lane five. The Netherlands in lane six. France in lane seven. West Germany in lane eight. 1952 was the last time we didn't win a gold. And there's Cornelia Ender there, thinking about the race, the leadoff swimmer. It's nice and it's best to get a lead and a relay because you've got clear water and... Some of their young swimmers are only 15, 16 and they'll be in Moscow in 1980. And Shirley Babishoff now, the United States relay team, will be in lane three. There's Cornelia Ender up in lane four to lead off for the East Germans to hold the world record. They'll be favored in this event. The United States has an outside chance for the goal in Canada. 11 events. They've only lost one, just like our men. There's the USTA team. Shirley Babishoff in the middle. She is going and to anchor the team. Kim Payton will lead. Wendy Bolio will swim the second 100 meters. Jill Sterkel the third 100 meters. And the anchor woman will be Shirley Babishoff. First holds the world record 55.65. There they go, and in there with that great start of her, jumps right out in lane four. United States, second right now in lane three. If you're no one's pleased that they're, they're looking at her feet as the expression goes. Wendy Bolio. Wendy Bolio is one of the three American women to win medals here. Uh, for individual events, Wendy Bolio was third in the 100 fly. All right, Ender gave him a length lead. East Germany's in the lead. United States is second. And uh, third right now in lane two is the Soviet Union. Swimming for East Germany now in lane four is Petra Primer. There's a world record of 56.59. Let's With Jill Sterkel getting up, ready to go into the third 100 meter. And uh, picking up some time here, Wendy Bolio has picked up on the United States second in the four times 100 women's freestyle relay. East Germany touches and off they go. They're in the lead and we are second. United States is second. And running here is Jill Sterkel. They're up with them. And they don't have Ender in the final leg. Babishoff is our anchor person. Folio with a Look at this. Eight one. She's in the lead. Here's an upset right now the way it's going. Jill Sterkel has taken the lead. Here's Shirley Babishoff. She'll swim anchor. In this women four times 100 meter relay. Shirley Babishoff, let's look at the world record split, world record 352. We're oh, at 248. Hey. Fabulous split. She's swimming against Claudia Hampton. Hempel with six in the 100. Babishoff with fifth. It's all on her back. The whole team has been depending on Shirley Babishoff this entire Olympics. Shirley Babishoff has never won a gold medal. Shirley Babishoff in lane three. The East German Claudia Hempel in lane four. They're going to battle for the gold medal in the four times 100 women's freestyle relay. On the third, Babishoff in the lead. But she's being contested very closely by Claudia Hempel. Babishoff in the lead. Lane three, Hempel's coming on. Hempel coming on now, Babishoff spurts out. United States in the lead for the gold in the four times 100 meter freestyle relay. Shirley Babishoff stays in front. Here's the drive to the finish. Babishoff hanging on. Hanging on, going for the wall, and Babishoff is the winner. The United States has upset East Germany in the four times 100 meter freestyle relay, and Shirley Babishoff has finally acquired her first gold medal.